Imagine you have a thermometer that always gives readings that are 5 degrees higher than the actual temperature. Every measurement you take with it will be wrong. Because there's a pattern in the way this error arises, it's systematic rather than random. In science, any systematic error is called a bias. To make sure the results of an investigation are as accurate as possible, we always need to be on the lookout for biases and try to eliminate them. In the case of the faulty thermometer, you can simply replace it. But other types of bias are harder to identify and avoid. For example, even an accurate thermometer will give the wrong reading if it's placed in direct sunlight or held in your hand. To avoid these biases, weather services place their thermometers in specially designed white boxes. These are examples of measurement bias, which is a systematic error that arises because of the way data is collected. But there are many other types of bias that can influence an investigation in different ways. Imagine you're testing a new vaccine to fight a deadly virus. You gather a sample of human volunteers from your local university. If they all happen to be healthy men in their 20s, then this could systematically skew the results. Maybe the vaccine is less effective in women, or has side effects that only appear in older people with heart conditions. Because your sample is not representative of the wider population, your results will be limited at best. This type of error is called a selection bias which arises when our sample does not represent the target population. One way of avoiding it is through random sampling. Another common type of bias is even harder to spot. Imagine you're investigating the hypothesis that artificial food colouring causes hyperactivity in children. You set up a test in which one group of children eats brightly coloured sweets, while a control group eats fresh fruit. Sure enough, the children who ate the sweets with food colouring are soon bouncing off the walls. Your hypothesis has been confirmed. But you fail to take into account alternative explanations for the result, such as the higher sugar content of the sweets compared to the fruit. The systematic error that arises when we select or interpret evidence to fit our hypothesis is called confirmation bias. We can avoid this by always considering alternative explanations and actively seeking evidence against our hypothesis. To sum up, biases can arise at any stage of an investigation, from designing the method and collecting data, to interpreting the results and drawing conclusions. They can be produced by measuring instruments, sampling methods, or an unconscious desire to be proved correct. So to make sure you design a fair test, try to identify and avoid all sources of bias.